and welcome, Sonny. Woohoo! Thanks for your Michael Jackson dancing <laughs> little moves you had there. Well, that's my favorite song, so. I liked it. Sonny, where are you from? I'm from Thailand, from Isan area. Where about up north? There's a lot of places up there. Where, where are you from in Isan? Um, I'm from Konkan City. Konkan City? Yep. Nice. So were you, uh, did you have both your parents when growing up? Sorry? Did you have both of your parents when yeah. you were growing up? Yeah. And did you come from a big family, like brothers and sisters and grandmas? Um, kind of. Kind of. Like, I have one older sister. And yeah, I'm living like with a big family, with my parents, with my cousins. Yeah, so it's. So how was it uh, being the transgender in the family? Was it hard for your family um, all to accept in the beginning? I think in the at the beginning, like there are so many things new for them as well, and I think I'm in the family that they are trying to be open trying to understanding. So we've been starting about like learning to about each other. So like it was tough in the beginning. Sometimes my parents said mean things to me, my cousin mean, said mean things to me. Because like that time I think they don't really understand. But like time by time just like they are more understanding and I become more in myself in the same time. So I would say like, it was hard in the beginning, but then we love each other, you know, and we can see like, the, I mean, when, when they were so tough, so tough to me, because they worried about me, they care about me, that they worried about my future, what's gonna be, because so many transgender back then, like maybe 10 or 20 years, they got a lot of bullying they got a lot of, how can I say, people making fun of them, looked down to them, treated them like badly, or, I don't know, like hurting, like physical hurting. So they just worried about me. But I, I think I proved them that, you know, I'm graduate, I'm doing good with my studying, and yeah, that's that the story came from. Who had the hardest uh, acceptance in your family? Well, my family. Was it your dad, your mom? You know what, Grandparents? this is funny. I thought it would be my dad, but my dad's like, this is really adorable story for me with my dad. Cause um, that was my sister birthday. And we went to like a beauty salon, beauty shop for like stuff for the girls. But at that, that time, I was a little boy. But I'm like a sissy boy since, since I was like so little. And I saw the wig, the hair. Like, you know, I just keep looking at it. And my dad just like, you going to do the dance competition next week? Do you have a wig already? You know, it's like, he said that he loved me through that sentence. You know, so that time really made me feel like I can be accepted from my dad. And I don't know what would I ask for him like more. Because like, yeah, so my dad loved me, but who is the most that not easy to accept? I think would be my sister. Because I've been feeling like when I was in high school, she's like not really happy to having me as her brother that time. Cause maybe her friend making fun of her that having a sister boy brother and she doesn't want to hurt me. I'm, I do believe that, but she got bad, like got bullied from other and she just throw shit to me later. It's like connecting, you know? But when we've been growing up like five years ago, she just t keep talking about the old stuff in the past that she feels so sorry to me that she did that to me or made, made me feel this way with her when I was little. Did, did she get bullied for having a transgender brother? Not like bullied, but I think her friend sometimes making fun of her and 
yeah, I don't know, like, I'm not really sure because when we were little, we're not really close. What, what about you in school growing up? How was your school experience? Mm, it's been, well, they are like bittersweet, like both of it. I'm, I'm, I have a really good friend since I was so little, but in the same time, I got bullied a lot from my guy's friends. You know, like, um, how can I say? What kind of bullying would they do? Like, what, what kind of stuff would you experience and who did you run back to mm. when you were feeling sad? It's like, just being a sissy boy, they would treat that like, you know, like, I don't know how to explain, but like, making fun of me, like, copying how do I act, how I react, or something like that. And, like... You just felt, sh you just felt picked on, I guess. Right, and... Did it affect your education, your schooling? Hmm? Did it affect you to go to school by having everyone picking on you? Um, not really, because I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm lucky, because I have so many good friends around me. Most of them are girls. And um, I don't know. There are so many bad things, I'm sure, but it's just like, Maybe my mom always, like, the way that she taught me, like, we try to, like, look at the good, a better side to keep going, like, keep being positive, you know. When I was a kid, I really, like, try to be positive all the time. Even, like, oh, I, I, I remember that now, like, when, like, boys like to say it about us, like, if you next to like or like if you're next to me they will say like be careful to to to, to that 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 sissy boy or like that lady boy you know and and we don't even do anything but they just saying thing like we are freak or we are danger dangerous you know and that's what i feel like doesn't fair at all most of the time, we are the one who, like, how can I say, like, we not attack, attack them, but they attack us. I'm not even, like, doing bad things to you while you, like, starting to, like, say mean things to me. Because what did I do so wrong? You know, I have the same eyes, like, two eyes, one nose, one mouth. Like, what else do I, do I wrong? It doesn't make sense, so... Yeah. Why, why do you think it's like this here and around the world? Why do transgenders get bullied on a lot more than other LGBTQ? I see here in Thailand, you know, with the gay community or the tomboy community or wh whichever, I don't see it as much discrimination towards them as there is with transgenders when it comes to work or anything of the sort, or even mm -hmm. in school. It's like the stories I hear are all coming from transgenders. Mm -hmm. They're facing the most difficulties. Not only here, like I said, I mean, I have friends in, yeah. you know, back in the U.S., and they're facing the same problems also. What's, what's your take on this? Why do you think this is like this? Um, I do believe that. Every gender have a bad person and a good person, you know. But um, I feel like it's a problem from men that, you know, there are so many men in the world into trying, but they embarrass two men because men and men like to making fun of each other about this. And not so many guys that they are, can be true to themselves. And I'm sure that in this era that like, 
like a lot of people like more like come out or like being sincere to themselves like be true to themselves about what they want what they need in life but still like there are so many guys who can actually fuck a lady boy in the room but they're embarrassed to, to go out to date with them to dating with us because they don't want to be afraid because men treated a guy who dating men as a freak sometimes or they said like oh you're dating a, a lady boy you're gay you know right. and is it fair for us no not at all like why can't we love who we love and why can't we just being like respect to each other what is so wrong that dating lady boy that's my questions because we are in a human as well and right so people are i guess they're behind behind the closet door or something they're doing men are dating transgenders behind mm -hmm. closed doors and they you're saying they won't go out in public with them not everyone i wouldn't say like everybody but like what i have seen most of them yeah how's your dating experience been um fair not fair most of the time i never lies about me being trans like when somebody is seeing my pictures on the internet, they may thought that I'm a woman, something like that, right? But I'm gonna say on the first day, like, I'm a transgender. If you're okay to talk or not, like, it's up to you. That's the way that I'm dealing with these guys. And most of the times, you know, like, they just want to try new things. They're treating us like we just something new for them to explore. And I don't, I mean, depends on on the person like if that lady boy or that gay or that tom that lesbian they are okay to let straight people try them for experience that i respect them but to me i feel like we shouldn't our gender we shouldn't be like something for trying because we have heart we have feeling and we're not an object we are human. Now, being in Thailand with the transgender community, I'm not saying it's all, you know, working mm -hmm. freelancers, mm -hmm. but, you know, if people think about Thailand, they're definitely thinking about lady boys, sex right. workers, prostitutes, mm -hmm. this and that. And foreigners that come here that are searching online, that are mm -hmm. dating, probably have a mindset of every woman that they're meeting online might be an escort or right. they just want a quick fix or I, I, I don't know, you know, what I'm trying to say, but w what do you feel that, I mean, obviously you're not a freelancer, you know, you're not working in the sex business. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that because of the, the way Thailand is with the sex being so um, open, I mm -hmm. guess here, is it hard for you to find a good man? Like, are they just judging you? Um, is it hard to find a good man? I think so. Because one thing that's not true that every time they're working as a freelancer. And what I think that lots of transgender working as a freelancer because some jobs, some career, they don't accept that to work with, right? And they're not accepted to work in a workplace, right. so they don't have a choice. Right. They're stuck. And, and, and they need to eat. Right? Right. Like, everybody needs money to survive, like, their life. And not everyone has solid parents raising them and some right. are coming from poor villages and stuff. So they have to do it to survive, not that they like it. Well, if they like it, that's fine. That's your choice, your body, your choice, your decisions. I don't, I don't, I don't really like, I don't mind. In the same time, like, my country, the government doesn't supporting us. Us as in the poor people or LGBTQ or what? Both, if I can say that. And as a transgender, 
sometimes if you're not good looking, you're not accepted. I heard that before. Someone told me, someone actually said that. So that's something like the truth then. It is. They said, because I was born pretty, mm. I don't get judged and I can find a job. And you just said it too. It doesn't sound fair for you. Yeah, that's not fair at all. See? Right. Like, <laughs> Interesting. But ugly guy, ugly woman, they get a job. They get a good, better life. I'm not saying like ugly or beauty is bad or good things. It you know? shouldn't make a difference. It's just like everyone's. Why human. do we have to be like? Why can't be? Can, why can't we just being just a normal human? You know, like okay. For example, when I was in when I was in high school or like um, college, I feel like I have to try harder than straight gender to be accepted and to prove, like. How you ever feel like you have to prove like, to people all the time? I but mean, I do. Really. But a lot of transgenders feel the same way. We have the same problem that we have to improve all the time. And why do we have to do it all the time? It is unfair. Can we be an asshole sometimes? Can we be just like fucked up sometimes? Can we fail? Right. Can we just be like you guys? So you're saying you got to hide those feelings from public because then once they see it, then they're going to be like transgender, lady boy, uh-oh, stand back. They're having their mood, right? Something. No, I feel that, and I totally understand where you're coming from. Do you ever wish you were not born this way? Do you ever wish you were born as a woman or a straight guy or anything differently or just been gay? Um, they are two two ways for me. I really have it I'm worth money to be a lady boy. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Say it again? I said I am actually happy to born to be a transgender. In other way. Like I can be standing out as as an artist. I feel like I'm just being myself and doing my things. It's like really helpful to like not like helpful, how can I say? Like, it Meditating? helped me to stand out. Okay. And more interesting, I don't know. But to live in life, to, to be treating, to like, to be accepted. Yeah, of course, I wish I was born to be like straight gender. Even man or woman. I don't, I don't like think about like, yes, I want to be a woman. Of course, I do want to be a woman because I'm transgender, right? But in the same time, just like, my life would be easier if I'm straight. So you mentioned you're an artist, is that right? Yes. And you said something earlier um, that you are getting ready to be a singer? Not like I'm going to be a singer, but I just finally break the walls on myself. Like I've been dreaming about to be a singer for a long time ago, right? And Sometimes I feel like oh, I'm not, I never be good enough. I'm like a lot of negative thinking. But then, like lately, like about year, two years ago, I've been writing a lot of songs from my experiences, like from my life, from my like bad relationship or happy relationship or something like that, or like bad or shit st situations. So I finally made some song, a song. I like one song <laughs> and I feel like my dream is coming true. Can you give us a little bit of taste of that song just to hear the lyrics of what it's about? You should, you should listen to it later. Oh, don't be I, shy. I won't, I won't Come on. Spoil. Nope. Nope. No, I guess keep it. Okay. You'll tell us where we could find it then. Is it online or somewhere? Um, when it finishes, it's going to be on YouTube for sure and maybe put it on Spotify or something like that. Nice, congratulations. <sighs> it's you... not finished yet, so, but I'm working on it. So the, the, the struggle and fight to become a musician, how would you balance it with the struggle and fight of being a transgender? Um, would you yeah. say you, was it harder for you to be a musician, to mm. fight through that mental block of not being able to be a singer and then, you know, making it? Well, um, for my experiences, I feel like more about art, art people, they're more open mind. 
and of course some of them they like treated me like ah uh, like, oh, like were that. were they but not so many that's that's what have been like scenes you know but like lots of people that mostly when they know that when they know that I am doing music or like doing song writing songs or like playing guitar singing they actually like, oh interesting or like some of them like you want to like doing some music or maybe you can you know how can i say collab collab right. collaboration something like that and yeah especially in Bangkok there are so a lot of opportunity here that's why i moved here because m- most of the time when i was in my hometown people are not really open mind yeah that's a good move definitely yeah Think so, so you mentioned uh, broken hearts, love, and all this kind of stuff. What was the longest relationship you've had uh, in the past? And was he a foreigner or a Thai person? Um, most yeah. of the time, I'm dating th- foreigners. But um, what was the longest? And did they? What, was it re- accepted? His family, your family. I mean, was it just good? And why did it end? Um, I would say once. I was like together with a guy, a Thai guy, and we on and off for like three years, but not not like always, like you know, it's just like three months, and we've been gone for like six months, and we back together in three months, or like back together, and we were together the most of the time that we have been is like one month, <laughs> like every day. Yeah, like every day, like one month. Not every day, but like the longest that we had is one month. His family accepted you as well? No. Gotcha. He, I really appreciate one thing from him. It's like when he, before he come to ask me to be his girlfriend, he went to like his house and tell, told her, the, his family about going to dating me, you know, and they just like, Go to break up with her. So they like one. Yeah, yeah, wow. But he was fighting for me for us for like a couple of weeks, I think, and he just gave up. And the last time that we were together, like we just broke up for like one week ago, and this time is the longest. A Thai guy. Yeah, we were together for like a month, and we didn't tell any one parents. Like I don't, I didn't. I told my mom about it, but she just like listening. She like okay, like because there's no problem for for her, for my fat parents, but for him, I think he wouldn't say anything because like I think he's not like a kind of person who like brave enough to make any decision. I think, but he actually got be- a lot better. But I can see like the way he changed. So there's something going on between us. So that's why we break up. But for the parent, for 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 his parents, I don't think they are accepting me. So we have never. you have you ever dated a foreigner? I think you mentioned you did. Yeah. And between the Thai culture and Western culture, and being the you're transgender, mm-hmm. which one feels more understanding and knows more on who you are as a person? I think when I'm dating foreigner, I feel more like myself, and they they're more educated, and they have some information before they dating me. You know, like so they're more understanding me, and they're more like. Um, they don't really judge me, or they don't really ask me like, "Do you have boobs or do you have like downstairs?" You know, like they just they just accept me the way I am. But most of the time, when Thai guys asking me on like dating app, they just like, "Do you have su- did you get some surgery yet? Do you have boobs?" Like, okay, if you want boobs and something downstairs, why don't you go for a girls? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't mind that they ask me, but when it happens really often, it's just like, are you looking for a relationship or are you looking for boobs? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it sounds funny. 
Would you say you've, you've been in love before? Of course I've been, yeah. And what does that mean to you, love? Like, what's your definition? Um, I have been disappointed of love so many times. But I don't know why that I never gave up. Because <laughs> I think I, I, I still believe that I will find somebody that who like accept me and who wants to love me, who who will love me like the way I will do them. I don't know. I just I just still believe that love is something that exists, and love is beautiful, even it's painful or it's hurt or disappointed or bad things, but still beautiful anyway. I don't know. You got any plans to get married in the future one day? To be honest, I would want to marry, but in Thailand, I don't think I can. Well, I'm not talking me. about like a paper, just to find someone that loves you and, you know, yeah. gets I, married. I, I wish, I wish I have. I wish. What kind of dreams you got for the future? Dream. Um, to be a singer, yes, I already said. And of course I want to have, um, I want to get married. And I want, I've been feeling like lately, I feel like I want to have a kid. You want to have kids, huh? Yeah, I want to be a mother, a mother, but but I don't, I'm not sure if my kids will having a good life. I don't want them, I don't want my kids to get bullied or I don't want my kids to have a bad experience when they were little, like me. And I just, I'm just not sure about the country that I'm living right now that I, it's a good place for me to like having kids or not. Or if I'm good enough to be a mother or not. Because my mom, she's amazing. She's like really, really good mother. Like, I don't even know if I can love my kids like the way she loved me or not. So if you had a child, what would it be? Would you want a boy or a girl? Or? They can be any gender, for sure. Nationality? Would you adopt a Thai kid or a Cambodian, American? I think it depends on, it depends on that time. I can't answer any. So let's, let's say you don't get married and you're alone. Would you still adopt a kid and be a single parent? I'm not sure. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not really sure because I'm now 26 years old, right? And I'm not sure like, if I can really take care of somebody. Like, I don't want to make their life more, be more worse, something like that. If I'm, if I can responsible of my life, I don't want that to happen to them. So yeah. what, what is hard for you today in life? Mm. What would you say is some of the hardest things you got to deal with? Actually, there are so many things, but of course, I just wish that people can be more respectful to each other because it's really affect, affect to, to my people that, you know, we, sometimes we feel like we, never, we will never be enough. But actually, there's nothing that we can do because we was born this way. And what can we do? Because we, we, we we will never change like from, from the bone because like we we born to be like this and ah oh, I think the harder things for me sometimes it's just like to be accept who you are. I will look like the person who really accept myself, right? But also I have so many doubt in my head. I have so many negative thoughts in my head that oh I would I I will not gonna do that. I will. I will never gonna make it happen. I will never gonna do that. Like, that's still happening to me nowadays. But I'm trying to work on it. Like, nobody would love you the most like you do. 
and be true to yourself. Who, who do you talk to when you have these moments, you know, like in Thailand, do they have people like, you know, that you can go to and talk about your feelings? And um, for my experience, uh, most of the time I talk to my friends. And your friends are really close to you mm -hmm. and they can share? Sometimes my parents, That's sometimes. Good. Really good. Because we, we kind of close, me and my family, we kind of close, but it's not, there are so many sensitive topics that we couldn't speak up or we're not like really comfortable to, to talking about it. So most, most of the time, more like my friends, more like my friends, yeah. So if you were able to change something about yourself, like, what, what would you do? Mm, to change how? Like if you had a wish, like to anything you wanted, like here's a wish. If that is a wish, I would have like, I would, I would wish that I would look more feminine. <laughs> so looks. Yeah, about the looks, I think. So just you would, if you could change anything about yourself was to remain a transgender, but just you feel that you're not beautiful enough. Most of the time, yeah. yeah that's, but that's just yourself thinking that. Mm -hmm. No one else says that to you, right? I mean, I'm actually kind of like confident about myself and like love how, how I'm being. But there are so many times that I, like somebody said mean things to me. Recently, like in your 20s? Still, yeah. Well, sometimes like they're just like, oh, why you have like a really big shoulders? <laughs> or like, you, you're just like a man with the long hair, something like that. Mm -hmm. Or like, you're so tall. Like, and for my feeling, you know, in my deep down feeling, I feel like there's nothing wrong about my body. But when people say that things to me, I just feel like I need to like doing something to make myself look better, to not get that bullied. Mm. But we cannot stop them to speak shit. Are you eating hormones at all? I used to take hormone. At what age? Um, like 20, 22. Okay, so pretty late. Yeah, but pretty late, yeah. And I'm, I stopped. Did, was it affecting you? It is, it was some, some effect to, to me, to my body, to my, for sure. Cause like taking a woman hormones and like, you know, this construction, a little change, or like I have a little hip, little boobs. Oh, things do change. Yeah. If you, if you continue taking it and, and like, yeah, if you continue doing it, it changed. Mm -hmm. But, oh, the reason that I taking hormones really late because when I was in college, I started in, in the art school, right? And I really need my brain mm -hmm. to work, to, to creating, to, you know, mm -hmm. so I don't want anything to affect my brain. <laughs> And the hormones were affecting it your mood. It is like sometimes like mm. you got so dizzy and like it's sometimes you I don't know like you 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 forgot things sometimes or like you're talking nonsense. And I just feel like my brain, my heart, you know, it's really important for me because I need to creating some things. Right. And yeah, be clear thinking. Right. So are you regretting that you're not doing it anymore? Are you thinking about maybe doing them in the future? About taking hormones? hormones. Yeah. Or you just completely no, no more? For now, I don't see that necessary. But maybe surgery, maybe get some boobs one day. So you haven't had any surgery done to you today? Never. OK, so you're all natural. All natural. And if you could do one thing, it would be breast implants. For the in the future, yes, because I want to dress up and looking good, mm -hmm. looking more like feminine, not like looking good. And what's stopping you today from getting them? Is it the money? It's expensive, yeah. It's about 100,000 baht, roughly $3,000. Kind of, like that. So if you had the money today, you would make an appointment? Maybe, yes. Yeah, go for it. Okay. 
What would you say is the most important thing you've learned so far in life? The person who you will, we will, who we will love you the most is yourself. Just love yourself. It's the most important thing. Listen to your body, listen to your heart. Do you wish you've had a better life? I think I'm sure that everybody does, including me. Are you happy today? Um, um, <laughs> why can't I just say it happy? I feel like I'm not that happy, but I'm happy. You know what I mean? Not that happy, but happy. But like, I can still see some things in my life that can make me happy. But of course, I want to be happier. Like, well, what do you worry about all the time? What would you say your biggest worry is? Hmm? Worry. What do you worry about the most? About my life. Yeah, whatever it is, yeah. Um, Every day, the biggest worry of you at all time, always. I'm worried about my. My, um, how do I say my needs, my nephews. Or the people who was born like later, I don't want them to like facing the same bad like situation that I had. And if one of my like cousins was born and being trying or being like gay, I'm sure that new generation parents are more like open mind, and they have like a lot of. Um, knowledge, information. I don't know what word would be, but they would know something to handle, to, to, to teach, to take care mm. of, of like the young new generations. Children. Yeah. So you worry about the new generations, the transgenders, or gay or LGBTQ, mm -hmm. or people that are born differently. Right. Oh, interesting. I don't want them to like facing the same thing that I had. You ever thought maybe it would be better if you were born in a different country hmm? growing up? You ever thought about like... Yeah, I mean like for example, if my friend's kids, if they can pick, I think I would want them to like have like born, birth the baby somewhere else. Not Thailand? Really? Hard country My country in? is not that awful, but it's not that good as well. What are the struggles you face here in Thailand? Um, not as a transgender, but as a being in Thailand, just being a Thai. What are some of the things that's hard for you? Well, we are a democracy country, right? But that's not a real democracy. I think this sentence already explains mm -hmm. my country right now. And a lot of new generations and my generations have a lot of hope that it, it, it will change. And do you see it changing, that it's coming? Is it getting better in the past 10 years? Like, do it, you see it, some people? It's getting better in every, every year, every day. But this era, eight years, mm. that's not. Right. You know. I used to have a lot of dreams in my country that it would happen. But something took our dreams, something took our life, something took our place. What a sad story. Now you just have to wait and see? I think so. What will be next? If I become a parent one day, you know, to have a child and if my child will never have a dreams or their fantasy or the belief that they would believe that they can be something in the future, it's a tragedy. Mm. Oh, wow.
you know, it's really bad. Like, life would be no meaning if you don't have a dream, you don't have passion, if you don't really think that your dreams can be true. That's, that's sad. Well, let's hope for the best for everything in the future of both the country, your life, yeah. music, your career. I hope so. <laughs> all good, positive things to happen in the Thank really you. near future, Sunny. Thank you so much for coming today and expressing everything about, you know, your feelings on life as transgender and everything you said. It was a great interview. And um, we'll definitely do a follow-up of you later in the future to see how your music career is coming along, too. Is there please, anything, <laughs> please. <laughs> is there anything you want to say to the people watching before we say goodbye? Um, try to be respectful most as you can. Because everybody is just a human. And we have right to love. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Sure, you're welcome. And yeah, God bless you.